And then last little thing here, real quick, I just thought this was pretty interesting because uh, the, the Kentucky Wildcats, they have opened spring practice as well up there in Lexington. And after the first practice of the spring, Will Levis, starting quarterback, and new offensive coordinator Rich Scangarello spoke with the media. And I found something a little bit interesting here. So let's kick it over to, uh, again, this is Will Levis and Rich Scangarello, the new Kentucky offensive coordinator, talking about uh, improving Levis's game heading into his final season here at Kentucky. Uh, I mean, I, I think Coach Scangarello brings a lot of just technicality to the quarterback position. He's really able to focus in on the little things. And, I mean, just with his experience and how many different NFL quarterbacks he's worked with, he understands how different guys tick and how um, – just footwork and timing align with certain concepts and routes. And I think that just um, the little things that we've switched already footwork-wise and timing-wise uh, is going to help us a lot in the long run. They've talked a lot about the similarities in the offense. Is, is day one, of, install day one of spring practice, does it feel like a, a, a day one? Or? No, 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 no. It definitely some stuff a little different. Some terminology is a little different. But we try to keep as much as we could the same. But uh, we're all, especially with the meetings we've had, uh, just with the switch in terminology and, and how we're going to call plays, uh, we had a pretty solid, kind of smooth first day. But I mean, first day camp always going to be a little rusty. Definitely some things we got to work on, but also a lot of good things. Did, a lot of things we did really well. Yeah, I I just say marrying my footwork with throws and just really getting consistency when it comes to timing and that just the throw starts from the ground up. When when a, when a throw is missed, it's more often than not you can see something with the footwork as to why that throw missed, and so just. Really just working on just perfecting my footwork and getting the time and accuracy of my throws on point. Yeah, I mean, I my background and kind of my beliefs in quarterback play and what I, I know and have taught is everything is tied to the timing uh, of the feet. And if you're going to run this style of offense, a pro-style offense, and you're going to be – you want to bring out the best in the quarterback, um, the timing elements are everything. And I just feel like it – empowers them to be in position to throw when things flash you generate more explosives you're more accurate um, there's a lot of things that catch and run is important and, and it all starts with the quarterback's feet so yeah Will's made a switch um, he likes it I think it'll just get better and better the more he does it and uh, like the way it looked today you see how physical he is how does that fact fit into you know what you kind of want to do with the quarterback well he's got to protect himself too so we've had some discussions you know there's a fine line between uh being a baller and being reckless um and when your organization or your university or your teammates and people are counting on you uh there's a good balance of of uh you know controlling impulse control is what i'd say where you have to make those decisions in split seconds to protect yourself and get down or run out of bounds full speed or hey i need the first down on third and five and this is to win a game. I gotta sell out. So, to me, his his physicality is one of his blessings, but it's also something that if he doesn't manage it, could lead to negatives too. And so that's that's the fine line. Where when you're in a red jersey, and you're not getting hit, you never feel that. So uh, it's not until game day. So practicing that mindfully now will only help him down the road. Now we're talking footwork here. I mean, we're <laughs> truly in the dog days of uh, the college football offseason. But I just wanted to make this point because. That was the thing. I mean, you talk to any Kentucky fan, they're all in on Will Levis. And I'm not sitting here saying he's a bad quarterback, but with Wandell off to the NFL, with uh, you know some elite linemen off to the NFL, as well as some key defensive players off to the NFL, this has got to be Will Levis-led offense. I know you still got Chris Rodriguez, but you know I'm trying to sit here and think when's the last time a running back took over the SEC – the, the last one that comes to mind is Derrick Henry. And all due respect to Chris Rodriguez, he ain't no Derrick Henry because there's only one of those guys. He's a he's a unicorn. And if Kentucky's going to win the SEC East, it's not going to be because Chris Rodriguez rushes for 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. It's going to be because Will Levis quits making mistakes, quits turning the ball over as a more accurate passer, and takes a step further in his development, in this offense, has true command of what the Kentucky coaches are asking him to do. And it's got to start from the beginning, from the basics, from the fundamentals. 
And when someone comes in from the NFL and tells you, you know, let's chip chip down to the basics, what I think you're getting wrong already, and the quarterback is embracing it and willing to publicly comment on it, I think that's just a sign of, uh, you know, the relationship he had with William Liam Cohen was strong, but it's got to start like that with this new offensive coordinator right off the bat if Kentucky is going to achieve and reach those epic goals they have this season in the SEC. So I just love to hear this from Will Levis. You got to be able to, in springtime, you got to pick these little nuggets out. And this is a nugget that I'd heard here and spreading it on with you guys. So, hey, again, I'm I'm on the Kentucky bandwagon, and uh, I just love to hear these little comments here from the quarterback and your offensive coordinator, Rick Scangarillo. But, hey, that's going to do it. That's all I got on this episode of the show. Try, still trying to line up a couple guest interviews. We'll see if those come through or not before the week is done. But if not, we got Arkansas speaking. I believe we got Texas A&M speaking here. We got uh, South Carolina is going to hit the practice field next week, as well as Tennessee. I mean, spring football is back, baby, in the SEC. And that just means more content for us to pour through and look for little gems like we just got on this one. So, hey, that's going to do it. For this episode of the show, we'll catch you on the next one.